You know this feeling when you've got an object that is or was intended for hard practical use, but it's just too pretty for that? This is one of those. This is a Kalkin shield from Salah's Archery. They reached out to me asking if I would like to get one of these for a video, and I sure did. So thank you for sending this to me. Kalkin is the Turkish word for shield. Yeah, we're doing that again. Mongols and early Turks used wicker shields in the 15th and 16th century. By the way, in case you're confused about the term wicker, it refers to the way something is made, not what it's made of. So uh, the material could be a reed or a cane, but uh, wicker just means it's woven, basically. Something is not made of wicker any more than a scarf is made of knit. Wicker shields were also common in other parts of Asia, like China, Thailand, and Vietnam. And this is what you get when a wicker shield is reinforced with a large iron boss in the 17th century. Visually, what stands out about this shield, aside from the extensive decorations, are these concentric grooves. That's because this is made of rattan rods that are arranged in this circular pattern. That's also what gives the shield its convex shape. You can see from the side it's basically a dome which helps deflect blows. The boss is made of steel. They don't specify what kind, but I'm assuming it's mild steel, which is most common for shield bosses and fittings and guards and things of that nature. As I said, the main body of the shield is made of rattan and covered in cloth. They don't mention what, so I don't know if it's canvas or linen or something else. And then you've got this decorative trim, which is really pretty, that's stitched over the edge of the shield. Then on the other side, you also have a highly decorated cloth and uh, foam padding in the center, which is very important functionally. And then you've got these rings attached to the shield to which ropes are tied for holding the shield. Based on the look and feel, I'm guessing it's a silk rope, but I don't know for sure. So you've got different lengths here that serve different purposes. The long one is for hanging it from your shoulder. So this way it can be easily combined with a bow. Uh, this one here happens to be a Scythian bow, which is much earlier, but it's what I have. It can hang there as passive protection while you use the bow, and it's also useful on horseback while you're holding onto the reins. It's just there, you don't have to hold onto it. Well, while messing around with it, one of these rings just came off. It didn't break, but that makes me think that these rings should be a little stiffer, maybe thicker, because uh, it comes off a little bit too easily. If the rings were welded shut, they would be stronger, but that would mean you couldn't take them off to replace the rope. I don't even know how that came off. That's actually pretty tight here. Another neat thing about the way this is set up is you can wear it Captain America style on your back. So this way it protects against arrows from the back and you've got your hands free. You could even wear another shield if you wanted to. I doubt they did that, but you could. You can also adjust the length of the rope to serve as a support strap while holding onto it. So that's pretty neat. And speaking of holding onto it, there are several different ways. The most obvious and intuitive way is to slip your arm through these ropes here and use it as a strap shield. That's also why I'm wearing this gambus in here, not just because it matches the color, and because uh, the, the kind of akaton they wore back then is not too dissimilar from this gambeson style fencing jacket here. And also so I can, I can test how well it fits, so I can fit the, my arm with the gambeson and the glove through here and hold it quite comfortably. The reason I wanted to check that is because another fairly similar strap shield I have here does not allow that because this strap is a little bit too tight. So if, you, if you're wearing armor underneath or you have particularly large beefy arms, um, this wouldn't really fit. And in this case, this would be a shame to just cut off and replace. This one is more adjustable and replacing the rope, of course, is cheaper and easier. So, so this is quite comfortable. Overall, very, very easy to use because this is a particularly light shield. It weighs quite a bit less than that. I'm gonna post the measurements and specs in the description below if you're interested in the specifics. But, you know, just, just holding this is very easy. I mean, rattan with just a bit of steel. 
it's much lighter than many other shields. It's also pretty small, so it doesn't cover all that much. But anyway, I was talking about ways of holding it. The other way is to hold it like a buckler by gripping these two straps here in the middle. So now you have the flexibility of a center grip shield where you, you can move it around more. You have a lot more different angles and it's also useful against archers because if uh, arrowheads penetrate through and you, you've got it you know, right on your arm like this, your arm might get punctured. That's also a bit of a drawback compared to a Euro style center grip shield or buckler where you have an opening for the hand. So basically you're supporting the handle of the buckler with the meat of your palm. While here your knuckles are resting against the shield. Now of course the padding is there for a reason. I just imagine you know, with a powerful strike that might beat up your fist a little bit, but um, shouldn't really be a big deal. I really like this versatility. You can do so much with this shield depending on the situation and what you want to do with it, whether it's strap or center grip or you know slung around one shoulder or both shoulders on the back or whatever. There's just so many ways. For melee, this kind of shield could be combined with a killage, for example. I'm not familiar with the techniques that were used historically. Uh, personally, I'd be inclined to hold the shield like this, you know a little bit forward and angled to create that cone of defense and then cut in a way that my arm stays behind the shield, covered at all times. But I've also seen it facing more forward and with the hand leading past the shield, a little bit more exposed, but um, you have more angles that way because if you keep it close to the shield, you always have to work around it and uh, it's a little bit more of a hassle. Normally I'd want to test the shield in sparring, but this is just too nice. I wouldn't want to beat it up and scratch the paint and tear the fabric and all of that. All those things that happen in sparring, which is the same reason why I haven't tested the targe either. It's also too nice. Um, particularly this, you know, just the way it's painted. There's so much detail. I'm going to show you some close-ups. So you can see there's a lot of care that went into painting it. It's done with great precision and uh, yeah, it would be too nice. However, they said they could potentially send another shield, just plain undecorated for practical tests. I just want to see first what kind of interest there even is in this video. Let me know if you would like to see more tests. So this is not the usual full review I do simply because I don't know much about Ottoman history and there wasn't a whole lot of information I could find about these. So there is little I can say about the historical accuracy of this reproduction other than looking at pictures, which yeah, seem pretty similar. I've seen both other reproductions and originals that are set up like this as well with the ropes that are you know, decorated in a similar way. I don't know how accurate the size and weight is. It seems pretty close. The weight, I can't imagine that there would be much variation simply because of the materials used there. It's, it's all light. And uh, yeah, overall, it seems well made. So yeah, it's a little bit limited, what I can say. Looking at the craftsmanship overall, you know, as far as I can tell from the outside, without tearing it apart, it seems great. Definitely really nice work. I don't know what kind of paint they used on the steel or how durable it would be. And uh, overall, it's a beautiful collector's piece. So the only issue is, the price, which is not something I had to worry about because they just sent it to me for the video. It's currently $783.60. That's Canadian in US dollars. That's 572 as of April, 2024. So that's quite a pile of money. Um, now my head is still kind of stuck in the 2010s. As far as prices are concerned, everything is much more expensive now. So there's that, but either way it's, it's quite a lot to spend on a collector's item. Whether or not it's worth it, I, I just don't feel like I'm entirely qualified to answer that because of my lack of knowledge of these kinds of shields. Now, um, while I'm talking about it, I'm already seeing that a bit of thread here is coming off and I've just handled it. I haven't even really used it. And I said the rings could be a little stiffer Anyway, that's about all I can say. If you would like to see a practical test with an undecorated shield, spread this video like an STD. That's maybe not the best way to put it, but anyway, you know, share the video and interact with it and all of that. And uh, then if there's enough interest, then maybe you'll see the test. So until then, hope you enjoyed this. 
Thanks for watching. Uh, check it out in the description, link and specs and all that. Take care, folks.